exceptions or limitations of the of the Lewis octet rule. Uh, sir. Yes. Uh, can you please show us uh, the how to memorize the periodic table like shortcut trick? See, I have not uh, till now. I have not memorized anything of science. To if you want to memorize, means it should be without any logic. Mm. Like we have memorized our poems in our lower classes, or still now also. So when you memorize something, then you have to go out of your brain. I have not memorized anything. If you go on practicing, a day will come. Automatically, this name will come. Okay. So I do not have any shortcut way to remember periodic table. You will go on writing it. Okay. So many elements you cannot memorize, 118 elements. So you practice it, you will find automatic will come. Of course, there are some. Um, Mnemonics are there, some sentences that are there, like in that case, if you take uh, one or two uh, alphabets from that sentence, that then the period table is ready. I do not know there. Hmm. Okay, then, sir. Okay. <clears throat> See that? What is the drawback and limitations that we have done? Or limitations of octet rule that we have done. That there are several molecules which do not follow the octet rule. Like <coughs> we find that hydrogen and lithium show double. Each row of tick. Then we have come across incomplete octet. Okay, there are several elements. They have formed stable compounds, but there you will find the octets are not complete. Uh, we have done like this: barium chloride or magnesium chloride or BF3 or ALCL3. They do not follow. Use a test. Then we have can expanded octet that you have seen PCL5. You have already done also SF, F6, etc. Then we have found <clears throat> there are some non-bonded non species out there. We call them as uh, odd electron molecules. Odd electron molecules are there. That we have seen this NO, NA2, Etc. Okay. <clears throat> this theory does not explain the shapes of molecules. All that. Whenever you have drawn the structure of the molecules, we have done drawn circles. Circles are two dimensional. Okay. Many molecules are there which are linear. Some of them are two dimensional, and some of them are, most of them are three dimensional. So this theory does not explain. Okay. And moreover, it does not. Explain 
डी फॉर्मेशन ऑफ ऑफ कंपाउंड ऑफ नोबल गैसेस दो आई टोल्ड यू द नोबल गैस डिड नॉट फॉर्म एनी कंपाउंड बट इट इज नॉट ओके नोबल गैस लाइक जेनॉन फॉर्म्स ए वेराइटीज ऑफ कंपाउंड Xenon forms XCF two, XCF four, XCOF four, XCO three. Okay, etc. So it does not explain. These are the products. Please write down. Can you understand what I did? I am going to ask you to give me a few more questions. Okay, now we'll go for. Now we are going to discuss a small, small points. Okay. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So, how does noble gases form compounds? Sir, because noble gases are uh, uh, fully stable, right? Yeah, it can form. It can form, sir. Yes. Then no noble gases compound. We are going to. It is there in your syllabus in class twelve. Then we'll explain. Okay, sir. They form by sharing of electrons. Okay. Now we'll come across a term called formal charge. It's very easy to calculate. Formal charge. Okay. Formal charge for the atom. in a molecule or ion is a charge calculated for that atom based on the lew structure of the molecule or ion using the equation using an equation what is the equation
formal chart. Oh. Right. So done. Okay. So let the formula remain here. Hmm. So what we'll do. After that, I'll show you and you write it. Hmm. So first, let us take. So we have to draw its new structure first. Okay. So. Oxygen, oxygen, oxygen. So oxygen has six six valence electrons. Okay. So let me write. New structure you could practice at home, otherwise you will not be able to do. Please remember. See first oxygen. Okay. Let me write here one, this is two, and this is three. Three oxygen atoms are. So, okay, I have one. Right here, A, B, and C. So, in first oxygen atom, C, 2 plus 2 plus 2, I have put 6. Second, in B oxygen, 2 plus 2. Okay, then what you will have here now? Because I have to make it octet. See here, this is A. 4 plus 4, 8. Now on the third oxygen, see here, third oxygen. Third oxygen has six electrons. It also has to be
8. See, here you have two single bonds, these are covalent bonds. In this case, the bond, in this bond, no electron is being given by the oxygen C. Both the electrons are given by oxygen B. So this is a covalent bond, this is a coordinate bond. All right, so how can I write in our according to our old concept? This is two bonds, two covalent bonds. This is the pair of electron which did not take part in bonding. The pair of electron which does not take part in bonding, we call them as non-bonded electrons or lone pair. See, and this is what? I told you coordinate bond is being shown by an arrow. See, so it is having, this is the pair of electron and it has three lone pair. This is this. All right. So let me calculate formal charge. charge of oxygen A. What does it say? Number of valence electrons in free atom. So, each oxygen has six. Number of lone pair of electrons. How many are there? Two plus two, four. Then what does it say? Half number of bond pair electrons. So this oxygen is having how many? How many electrons are there in this bond pair? Each bond contains two electrons. So that we call it bond pair. So here you can see how many electrons are there. Two plus two. Two bonds are there. Two into two is four. Okay. So minus half four. So that is equal to six minus four. Minus two equal to three. So in oxygen A, formal charge is G. Then formal six. Okay. So it is six. Now Number of lone pairs of electrons. See here, it is having only one. This is the one. So it is lone pair means two. Now, how many bond it has? This oxygen. See, this oxygen has two bonds in this side and one bond is this side, irrespective of whether it is a covalent bond or coordinate bond. Each bond contains two electrons. So three bonds are there. Three into two is six so uh, six so the six minus two minus three and right here plus one why because it's a question of charge then formal charge of Oxygen C. Number of valence electrons six. Number of lone pair of electrons one, two, three. Three means three lone pairs means six electrons. Okay. How many bond it had? Only one. So half each bond is equal to two electrons. So it is what? Six minus six minus one. So it is minus So, mm. can you yes. explain again that formal charge of OA? C. 
see here. What does it say? Number of valence electrons in free atom. So, yes. what is the number? 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. See here. This is not the last shell. Last shell is called valence shell. How many electrons are there? Six. Is it not? Six. Six. Hmm. Then, number of lone pair of electrons. See here. In this case, these two pair of electrons did not take part in bonding. So we call the mass lone pair. How many electrons? Two here and two here. Two plus two is four. Five, ten, four. So what does it say? Number of half of the number of bond pair of electrons. We know in a in a uh, in a covalent bond, see here. This is the way the bond formation takes place. So how many electrons are there? Two. Two. So how many bonds are there? Two bonds are there. So two yes. bond is having two electrons. So two into two is four. See here. Four. Four. Understood now? Yes, sir. Hmm. So can you repeat again, sir, O, B, and O, C? Hmm? So O, B, and O, C, can you repeat, sir? Why not? See here. Valence electron, do you know? Six. See, what does this say? Number of lone pairs. How many lone pairs it has? See? This is, this is the B. How many lone pairs? It has only one. So for pair means two. So only one pair means two. And how many bond it has? See? It has two covalent bonds on the left side and one coordinate bond on the right side. So I told you when the bond formation takes place, we then we don't bother whether it's a covalent bond or coordinate bond. We just will count how many bonds are there. See here, one, two, three. So each bond has two electrons. Each bond has two electrons. Each bond has two electrons. So three bonds are there. And three into two is six. So I've written six here. We just had it a color, isn't it? No, One very interesting thing. If you add the formal charge, all the formal charges of all the atoms, then you get a charge on the molecule. Ozone is a neutral molecule. All compounds are neutral molecules. Ozone is a compound. Okay. So now you add zero plus one minus one is what? Is zero or not? Huh? So the charge on the charge on the total molecule is the sum of the formal charges of all atoms. See here, plus one, minus one, zero is equal to zero. Okay, now we'll go for that second. You can calculate all. So let me write the structure of carbon. Okay, see here. Carbon. It is having three oxygen. Okay. 
carbon this this so we have three oxygen atoms here a b and c all right carbon has four electrons on this valence shell so it is two one and one so one two three four oxygen has seven electrons so eight electrons sorry six electrons see <coughs> two three four how many electrons are still left two electrons are there see here out of these six one we have put here out of the six one we have acha okay, let me finish this one oxygen has three oxygen electrons two are here so three four five six it will become octet all right now here let me do here it is out of six one it has given for covalent bond then so then third fourth fifth and this is a sixth one all right now count here how many electrons see here it is eight here it is there. two plus two plus two six plus one seven so octet is not complete now in this case this electron oxygen will borrow from outside this electron of oxygen has borrowed from outside now one two three four five six then it will again borrow one electron from outside this electron carries a negative charge of minus one so this has come from outside minus one this has come from outside minus one because of that we have written here two minus okay is going to borrow two minus all right so this is the living structure of carbon carbonate of c here now for now formal charge on carbon okay so carbon has how many valence valence electron six eh bhai valence electron is c 1s2 2s2 2p2 don't make mistake don't take atomic number ha huh? This is the outermost shell. It's called valence shell. So now here, the number of lone pairs. Carbon does not have any lone pair. See, this carbon does not have any lone pair. All the electrons are engaged in bonding. Okay. Now, how many bond carbon has here? See here. I can write this one is in this way. Oxygen. See, I told you each oxygen has taken one extra electron. Here you have one. and here you have one so this is the structure of carbon so <clears throat> number of bond pairs how many bonds are there see here two two bonds are here one single bond is here one single bond the total number of bonds are four okay so it has how many electrons see here this is one bond pair second bond pair third bond pair fourth bond pair So total number of electrons is what? Eight. So minus half eight is equal to what? Four minus four is equal to zero. Okay. Now we'll do. So I say it again. Formal charge on oxygen A. This one. Okay. so i will not write you will do it this 
epsilon root of one. So what did you find here? What so, is the oh. charge on first oxygen A? Six. Is it? Six. Huh? Hey. Are you mad? This is what is the what is the valence electrons on oxy, oxygen? Six. Six. Then how many bonds are there? Two. Four. Huh. Then half. How many lone pairs are there? Four. Huh? Four. 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 Then how much it comes? Zero. Two minus four minus two. Right. Then how come it is six? All. Yes, sir. It's zero. Oh, then who told it is six? So you asked for the uh, valency of oxygen, right? So I said six. Acha. Then what about what about B? How much it is so, the formal charge? So I got plus one. Plus one. Acha. Wait. I'm going to break your head. See here. B. Six. How many bonds are there? How many lone pairs are there? Six. See. One, two, three. So three into two, six. Then half. How many bond pairs are there? One. Huh. Okay. How much it comes? Six minus six minus one. How much it comes? Minus one. Power. Then here it is what? Six. Then how many lone pairs are there? Three. Three into two minus six. Then how how many bonds are there? One. I read. Place. Okay, now minus one. Huh? Well done. Uh, do some practice eh? and leave structure uh, practice at home.
now we are going to discuss some words which are related to huh to <coughs> the chemical bond in molecules huh? we call them as bond parameters bond parameters okay first one is bond length what is bond length say it is a and this is a what is the bond length see here huh. <coughs> this is the covalent radius of a and covalent radius of b so if you add the covalent radius of two of them is the bond length so what should i say here what is the bond length it is the internuclear distance between two atoms which has led to the formation of a covalent bond okay <clears throat> so it is the distance between the centers of the nuclei of two bonded atoms in a So let me write here A and A. So from here to here, this is called bond. Okay. So it need, need not be only AA. Okay. Say I have taken here H. And here I have taken CL. Sorry. Uh, so see here. They are not same. Hydrogen is small, chlorine is large. So this distance is called bond length. So done. Okay. So let us see on what are the factors bond length depends. Bond length depends upon the following. Factors one bond length increases with the size of of atoms okay <clears throat> see so this is hydrogen hydrogen is combining with H. okay say it is chlorine and this is chlorine this is bromine 
And this is iodine. See here, we know when we go down the group, <coughs> the sizes of the atom increases. Why does it increase? Because you go on adding the shells. So, see here, side of the hydrogen remains same. See, don't write. Okay, now, see here, H, F. See here, H, C. See here, H, B, R. See here, H. Is it not the bond length is increasing? Huh? So, bond length increases, increases with the size of the atom. Anyway, you did not write this one. Huh? All right. So, now we can write one example. Example. Okay. Bond. Okay, I'll write now here HF, HCL, HBR, and HI. How, what should I write here? Like this. This question may come that why does the bond length increases? You'll write as you go down the group, huh? the sizes of the halogen atom increases. So their bond length increases. Ah, good. Should you draw this one or should I rub? Uh, draw. I will draw. Very good, very good. Mm. Finished. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Now, second factor. See, this from from this thing only question comes. Right. Bond length decreases. Oh. Bond length decreases with the increase in multiplicity of bonds between two atoms. See, dear, try to understand languages are not difficult. Between two atoms. I just see here. Say, this is my finger, okay? Huh? And wait, I'll show you. Absolutely. 
that. Okay, see here. This is my finger. Can you see my finger? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, see, I have put a rubber band, huh? Okay? I have put a rubber band. So this is, you could think it is a single bond. Okay, see, see the distance. Can I not move my hands? Finger, see here. Ah. So I have put another one. See. Did it not come closer? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have put another one. See the condition of my finger. One is almost pressed against the other. Can you see? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you have more than one bond between the two atoms, in that case, you will find the bond length will go on decreasing. That is called multiplicity. It may be one, two, and three. I told you we cannot have more than three bonds between two atoms. Why? If you have gone for more than uh, three, in that case, the two nucleus come very close to each other. See, atoms are very large. Nucleus is very small. But in the small place only, you have the largest positive side charge. So when you bring them, you have a huge repulsion, and the bond is going to break. So up to three bonds are possible. Beyond that, it is not possible. All right, so bond length decreases with the increase in multi multiplicity of the bonds. Okay, then I'll show you now an example. See here, bond huh? length. Okay, dear, see here. So I have taken here now. Carbon, carbon, single bond. Carbon, carbon, single bond. It is 154 picometer. You know what is picometer? Achha, now, then I'll write here now. Carbon, carbon, huh? carbon, carbon, double bond. Okay? 130. Picometer and this is carbon carbon triple bond. Okay, it is hundred twenty picometer. See here. Okay, now you can ask me, sir, where from you have taken? No problem. All these molecules you have studied in school. See here. Where do I get? What is the where, from which molecule we have measured it? See, you can measure the bond length with help of X-ray. X-ray machine. See here. Example is ethane. This is what ethane. Anything which you do not understand, immediately tell. Or if you, whenever you study in the evening, if you find that you have forgot or you could not understand, in that case, you can call me at night also. You All of you know my phone number. And do not send me any uh, WhatsApp message without your name. Then I will not reply. Then it is, we call it ethyl or acetyl. Acetyl. See. From this molecule we have got. So what should I write now here? That we find the single bond is largest and the smallest one is the triple bond. These few chapters are very, very important. Nobody is going to teach you in future. So done. Done. Then I'm going to, to talk to you something. I'll write down one sentence, but this one I'll explain. Uh, when I go to the next. Yes. Sir, can you just wait a minute, sir? I've not finished drawing that. 
Oh yes, 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 yes. Please. Who is? I think Nadia only is very fast in writing. I uh, then what about the others? Where is Miss Lapang? Are you there? Yes. Ah yes, sir. Then where is Miss Chaudhary? Chaudhary is there. May I help? Huh? So, sir. Miss hmm. Dingda is there. Dingda is there. And I have two endangered male species. One is Orghor. Who is the other one? What has been a very long name? This gentleman. Hmm. Ba ye something like that. Sir, you can call me Iba. Iba. Okay. Okay. Now we are. I'm going to write uh, another uh, thing. I will explain it later on. Huh? That concept first I have to teach you, then only you will understand. Okay. So now we will write this one. Third. Bond length is affected by the type of Type of hybridization. Hybridization. Huh? This one I'll explain you later. Huh? Okay. Because before there are so many theories I have to explain, then only you'll understand. Okay. Greater the the smallest s character <clears throat> smaller will be the bond length okay smaller will be bond length Clear? So I'll write now here. Okay. This is SP3 carbon. See, we are measuring the carbon hydrogen bond length. SP. Okay. This is hundred and seven picometer. This is okay. I'll write here now. S. Ah. S. Character. Okay. This is fifty percent. Thirty-three point three percent, and. This is fifty percent. Okay, so this is. Sir, can you repeat this again, sir? 
Oh, apa 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 pun buat buat. I I tell you, let me finish that. See here. Bond length is affected by the type of hybridization. Greater is the S character, smaller is the with the bond length. This is I have written the molecule. This is S character, dear yeah? S character. Okay. This is 25 percent. This is 33.3 percent. This is 50 percent. This is your carbon hydrogen bond is 112.3 picometer. Carbon hydrogen bond is 110.3 picometer. And for carbon hydrogen bond is 107 picometer. This portion I'll tell you, I'll explain when I'll take the hybridization. Okay, it's going to take time because before that, so many theories I have to explain. Only in this few chapters, a lot of theories are there. Huh? These, are, these are the basic thing. Later on, we'll find. This theory, <coughs> you did not have to mug up. Yes. So where do you get the picometer number from? Picometer number is the picometer is ten to the power minus ten ten centimeter. One picometer is equal to ten to the power minus ten centimeter, or ten to the power minus twelve meter. Picometer is the smallest form of measurement. Okay. Huh? Yes, sir. Atomic structure we have done, now. Nah? Yes, sir. Any molecules? Thank you, sir. Uh. Okay, now, uh, one... Uh, uh, lady from BSF, she has joined recently. Her name is, I think, Ajnaya. Na? Hello? Yes, sir. Azania. How do you pronounce? Azania. Azania. Yes, sir. Achha. So, this <coughs> older videos could you access? Yes, sir. Okay. So, now we'll go to the second one, like bond angle. See, when more than one atom is bonded to another atom, an angle is being created. Say it is in case of say, say it is A, B. What will the structure? It's linear. It can be like this or it can be like this, but these are all linear structure. All right? But suppose it is this A, B, 2. So in this case, some of them may be like this. See, now after few days, you can, looking at the structure itself, you can interpret what will be the structure of it. Okay? Uh, we'll, we'll do it. After finishing valence bond theory, all these theories I'm going to teach. So you don't have to depend on me. But it, if it is this, this is linear. But it may not be like this, dear. Yeah? It may be like this. Okay? So this is called a bond angle. All right? So we'll write now the definition of bond angle. It is the Average angle between the orbitals containing bonding electron pairs.
bonding electron pairs around the central atom in a molecule why is it necessary for us to know bond angle because bond angle gives us the information about the structure of the molecule bond angle determines the shape of a molecule it depends upon the hybridization of central atom comma lone pair electron pair repulsion so we write here now this also i'll going to explain to you lone pair lone pair comma lone pair bond pair and bond pair bond pair okay i'm going to explain to you when the thing will come third is electro negativity of central atom Let us just write. So done. Hmm. So done. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, now we'll go for bond enthalpy. Enthalpy is an energy, okay? Bond. Excuse me, sir. Yes. So what is hybridization? Are I'm going to talk about it later. Okay, sir. We'll study in detail. Don't worry. Bone enthalpy. Enthalpy is energy. This is nothing but. See, I have taken here hydrogen. We know hydrogen. How it is formed? Hydrogen has formed. I, I told you that even the atoms are electrically neutral, but because of this electronic distribution, they are not stable. They want to want stability. Means they want to lower the energy. So what the, what then? What is formed now? See here. Two hydrogen has come closer to each other and form this bond. So this is the one that we write. Everywhere we can write with circles. Okay? This is called bond line structure. Now, I in the nature hydrogen atom has formed combined to give a hydrogen molecule. In this process, they have become stable and they have lost energy. See, hydrogen in the nature was formed billion and billion years ago. I should not say billion, million and million. Years ago. So there, there was nobody to measure. Is energy that is being released. Okay, then how to know it? How to know? See, in your childhood, your parents have given you what presented you a car. So it was you were very happy, but you are very very inquisitive to know how the car is moving. So you open the car. Those days you are not intelligent enough to understand it. So by that way, your car, that car got spoiled. Now when you have become bigger, when you open the car, you can you can see that how the all the instruments are present inside the car. So after opening the car, you understand again you can fit it, and you can again get the car. This is the way we repair or not. So when the hydrogen was formed, we did not know how much amount of energy. So to know this one, I can reverse the process. I'll break that hydrogen molecule into hydrogen atom. Okay, in this process, then how do you know? Yes, because in this process, you are only supplying the energy. When you are supplying the energy, then you know how much amount of energy was required to break it. So that energy, which you have supplied in the form of heat, if you convert it into, into energy unit, that is called bond enthalpy. Okay, so how to define? Because whenever any type of measurement is done, we are using an unit, okay? Whenever you say unit means what? Unit means one. So we convert everything into one. That is, it is the amount of energy required to break one mole of bonds of a compound. One mole of bonds. It can be one mole of single bonds, one mole of double bonds, or one mole of triple bonds. Clear? Now we have already seen if it is a single bond, the distance between the nuclei of two atoms is far. Distance is more. If the distance is more, then in that case you find the attraction is less. If the attraction is less, you require less amount of energy to break it. Suppose you have got a wooden pencil. New one. It's pretty long. If you wish, you can break it in the middle. But when the pencil becomes smaller and smaller by the use, if you want to break it, 
when it become too small of this size you try is very difficult to break so <clears throat> the bone enthalpy depends upon two factors one on the multiplicity of the bone if the number of bones are more you require more amount of energy to break it second bone length if the bone length is large bone enthalpy is less and with the decreasing in the bone length the bone enthalpy becomes more and more all right so we'll write down now the definition it is the amount of energy required to break you could break one more of bonds of a particular type particular type why do you say particular type dear because i told you it can be single bond double bond or triple bond particular type between two atoms in a in a gaseous state and is known as bond dissociation and thalpia let us write down i will explain everything and these are very very easy huh? my purpose is not to create problem in your life okay now i have taken here now hydrogen okay so how i can write now here see here hydrogen gas means what h and h let me write like this okay so when i break it what do i get here hydrogen atom okay now i'll take thermodynamics after few days in thermodynamics we deal with heat okay so in thermodynamics there is a notation for bond enthalpy we write small a and h stands for enthalpy or energy so this is what is 435 you don't have to remember all this thing i am just giving you to understand sorry kilo joule mole inverse okay this is one example so again right here now we know how the oxygen form oxygen has two bonds so in that case two oxygen molecule has come closer all right if you break it what do you get here oxygen atom plus oxygen atom what is the bond dissociation enthalpy see here in that case it is 493 493.05 kilo joule more see it is more than this 
time. Okay? N2. Now, this So if you break it, what do you get here? So you get nitrogen atom plus nitrogen atom. This 946 kilojoule mole See here. A sudden jump from 493 to 946 kilojoule mole mass. Okay, I don't know because still you are very infant to the chemistry. So I don't know. See here, it is 435. This is 493 and is 946. Why then? It should have been more. If not this, it should have been near about uh, 500 or 600 kilojoules, then why it is less? You know why? Look at this structure. These are lone pair, no doubt. But if this electron are negatively charged, oxygen is a small atom. So in this case, see, the small atom and these are the lone pair. When these two negative charges are very close to each other, nah, they repel. Because of repulsion, the bond has become weak. There are so many factors are responsible for that one. So you have the value is 493. Now it's very interesting. See here. Very interesting. See. Nitrogen, when this bond dissociation is, is so high, because of that, at normal condition, nitrogen does not react. Oxygen reacts slowly. Okay? In this case, you find nitrogen does not react because any chemical reaction, whenever you take first the molecule breaks down to atom, then only it combines. If you get so much of no energy, nitrogen does not react with anything at room temperature. Due to that, you will find all your food packets are being filled with nitrogen gas. Because if oxygen gas is there, Oxygen gas is going to react with your food and you will spoil it, will decompose. Huh? So, oxygen is born, air is being displaced with nitrogen. Okay, right. So done. Okay, now see, all molecules are not this. See, these are all diatomic molecules. Only few diatomic molecules we have in the nature. You know it. Hydrogen H2, oxygen is O2, nitrogen is N2, then we have four more. Fluorine is F2, chlorine is Cl2, bromine is Br2, and iodine is I2. So, when you break between two atoms, two similar atoms, only that one is called bond dissociation enthalpy. Only that one. But in case of polyatomic molecules, in case of polyatomic molecules don't get nervous what is the meaning of this all molecules you have seen in your book see here h2o they are different and here or not two atoms are there three atoms are there nh3 four atoms are there methane five atoms are there so these are called polyatomic molecules 
एवरेज बॉन्ड डिसोसिएशन एंथलपिस of the bonds are this and is known as bond enthalpy please remember whenever you say bond enthalpy it is average and what do you when you call bond dissociation enthalpy between two atoms hmm. okay now i'll give an example so we want to find out bond enthalpy of c here h o so i supply it what i'll get now here both the bonds will not break together Okay, you will get this. One of the bond breaks. Okay, so I write now here delta A one H is equal to five hundred and two. Kilo joule mole in parts. So this is first this one. Then this second one breaks. All right. So if one now what you get now here you get O. And eight. Here the value is not same here. Because situation has changed, it is four hundred and twenty-seven kilo joule mole inverse. Now, what is the average now? A average bond dissolved. Dissociation and thalpy. What is bond dissociation and thalpy? Is bond and thalpy. Is equal to what? Is equal to five hundred two four twenty seven divided by two. So it comes to four sixty four. Ah, you cannot see, na? Sorry. It is five hundred two plus four hundred and twenty-seven. This divided by two, which comes to four sixty-four point five kilo joule mole inverse. That is called now bond enthalpy. So difference between the bond dissociation enthalpy and bond enthalpy is different. In your book is not being mentioned. I do not know. It's very strange. Huh? For polyatomic molecules, we use bond enthalpy because it is the average of the bond dissociation enthalpy. This is called bond enthalpy. Please don't mind. I'll take over five minutes more. 
let me finish it. Uh, sir. Yes. Sir, today no sir, we have computer class at 9 a.m. sir. Oh, uh, then you can next day.